Near-Infrared Spectroscopy These are the objectives of today's video. Define Near-Infrared Spectroscopy Explain how Near-Infrared Spectroscopy works to determine the different types of functional group and bond that molecules contain. Site Applications of Near-Infrared Spectroscopy Near infrared spectroscopy or NIR is a type of vibrational spectroscopy that employs photon energy in the energy range of 2.65 times 10 to the negative 19th power to 7.96 times 10 to the negative 20th power joule. It corresponds to the wavelength range of 750 to 2500 nanometers. Near infrared is a part of natural sunlight and is generated by several light sources such as tungsten halogen car driving lights. This energy range is higher than necessary to promote molecules only to their lowest excited vibrational states and lower than typical values necessary for electron excitation in molecules. Its overall objective is to probe a sample in order to acquire qualitative and or quantitative information coming from the interaction of near-infrared electromagnetic waves with its constituents. So basically, we can use infrared spectroscopy to determine the different types of functional groups, the different types of bonds that our molecule contains. Now, it uses the following principle. Every chemical bond oscillates with a specific frequency that corresponds to a certain amount of energy. Now, the frequency of oscillation of any chemical bond is related to a quantity known as the wave number that that is given in units reciprocal centimeters, so centimeters to the negative one. Now, the greater the frequency of oscillation of our chemical bond is, the greater our wave number is. Now, when we take infrared electromagnetic waves and we direct those infrared electromagnetic waves at our chemical bonds, what happens is, if the frequency of that particular wave, if the energy of that wave matches the energy of oscillation of our chemical bond, then that chemical bond will absorb that energy. However, if the energies or frequencies do not match, then none of the energy will be absorbed by the chemical bond and our wave is said to be transmitted. So according to this graph, the x-axis is the wave number and the y-axis is the percent transmittance. So each one of these dips corresponds to a chemical bond that absorbed that energy. So basically we can use these dips to determine the different types of chemical bonds that our molecule has. Now the higher up we go along the y-axis, the less energy is absorbed by the chemical bond and the more is transmitted. The lower we go, the more is absorbed and the less is transmitted. Now if we go to the left along the wave along the x-axis as the wave number increases going this way the frequency increases and the energy of that oscillating chemical bond increases so uh, the bonds located to the left are the stronger bonds the bonds located to the right are the weaker bonds 
So we have the following given table and this table basically gives us the specific wave number values for each one of these chemical bonds and we want to use that to determine which one of these molecules corresponds to this table. So let's begin by looking at these four molecules and describing the different types of chemical bonds that we have. So, let's begin with our OH bond. So notice that molecule 3 and molecule 4 have the OH bond, while molecule 1 and molecule 2 do not. However, molecule 1 and molecule 2 have the NH bond. So we have NH for these two molecules and OH for these two molecules. Now, the wave number for OH and NH is very, very close to one another. So we see that that OH has a wave number of 3300 and NH has this wave number and they're very close. So that means we cannot use these values to differentiate which one of these molecules corresponds to this graph. Because if we look on our graph and we look within this region which is about here, we see that this in fact corresponds to a wave number close to this value. So this P can either be OH or NH and that means any one of these molecules could have this particular dip. So let's move on to the next type of bond. So these two molecules have the CO double bond. We have the double bond here, double bond here, and these do not. So if we go to the following table and we see that the table does not actually have the dip for this particular bond, then that means it cannot be molecules one and molecule two. So the C double O has a peak at 1700. Now if we go here, 1700 is about here and we see that there is no peak here and that means because there is no peak, it cannot be one and it cannot be two because these molecules have the C double O bond and this graph does not have that dip or peak. When I say peak, I really mean dip because we're going in reverse downward. So finally, we know that it's either three or four. Now, what is the main difference between these two types of molecules? Well, we can say that the main difference is this C and N that has a triple bond. This contains that chemical bond and this doesn't. Now, this particular chemical bond has a wave number that is given by this value, about 2240. Now, if we go to this graph and we find that there is a peak or there is a dip at this specific wave number, that means the molecule must be this and not this. So let's go at 2240. So 2240 is about here and we see that this is our peak or dip that corresponds to this particular chemical bond. And that implies that whatever our molecule is, it must have this bond and then it cannot be this molecule molecule because this molecule does not have this bond. So we see that this is our molecule that closely matches the following infrared spectroscopy graph. The application of near-infrared spectroscopy. Agriculture, polymer, environment, textiles, biomedical or clinical, pharmacy and cosmetics, NIR image.
many food manufacturing processes require accurate analysis of key constituents, such as moisture, fat, or protein. These constituents are critical to product quality, affecting such attributes as shelf life, taste, texture, and above all, consumer perception. Laboratory analysis methods usually require skilled personnel, or take a long time to complete, or require expensive reagents. Access to this key data, so critical to product quality, can now be achieved quickly and easily using the InfraLab NIR analyzer from NDC, delivering laboratory accuracy to the process in a fast, easy to use format, providing convenient, non-skilled access to reliable results. Each InfraLab is delivered ready to make the measurements you require over the ranges you need for the products you manufacture. To make a measurement, the user logs on and selects the product to be measured. The product can also be pre-selected by the supervisor, so that operators only have to place the sample on the analyzer, with no need to touch the screen. Once the sample bowl is placed on the turntable, InfraLab automatically begins measurement. Even multi-component measurements are achieved in just a few seconds. Product height fluctuations, temperature changes, and product color variations do not affect the InfraLab. InfraLab is secure, too. Each user accesses the InfraLab via a unique passcode, while the manager has full control over the functions which each user can access. Each time the InfraLab is used, the date, time, username and results are stored in a unique measurement file. InfraLab can store up to 10,000 measurement files and has capacity to store measurement parameters for up to 200 different products. InfraLab can measure almost any powder, flake or granule. And for the majority of products, no special sample preparation is required. InfraLab can easily measure products such as cheese, coffee, snacks, tortilla and potato chips. Use mobile sensing to measure produce quality and ripeness from crop harvesting all the way to store shelves. Eliminate multiple techniques and equipment by using one integrated instrument for engine fluid health analysis. Imagine being able to accurately detect your unique skin profile. From crops to cosmetics, TI DLP technology now allows you to bring the sensing and analytics of the lab to the field. Analyze materials from the palm of your hand and design with the smallest, most efficient DLP chip for mobile, Bluetooth-enabled, near-infrared sensing measurements. The new DLP 2010 NIR digital micromirror device is a programmable MEM solution that leverages the latest DLP 5.4 micron pixel for high optical resolution in a smaller form factor. The accurate programmable patterns enabled by DLP displace the industry standard in-gas array detectors, thereby reducing the cost and the size for your compact NIR sensing solutions.